Hello, I'm Ines from ColoratedCinematics.com and in this tutorial I will be teaching you on how to create this nice looking meteor in Adobe After Effects using the Trap Code plugin in particular. Uh, so in my opinion this looks pretty nice. Um, we can use this for uh, distant shots or like quick shots passing by the camera. Um, of course it doesn't look as nice as you can make it in 3D um, but it really does the job very well. Um, we are also going to implement this in uh, uh, some footage. We're going to track that footage and put it in there. Uh, and then you can do whatever you want, making a meteor shower or making a meteor crash, uh, anything you want to. So um, I found a stock footage over here on a new website for stock footages um, called Dissolve. And in my opinion, this is a great website because they have high quality and royalty free uh, HD footage. Uh, you have to buy this uh, most of the footage um, starting from five dollars um, but you're doing an action right uh, right now uh, where you can get three free uh, stock footage files uh, so I'll put a link in the description so you, uh, so you can check that out so it's a really great website um, and they don't charge for uh, the resolution so you always get the best resolution available and they only charge for how hard it was to get one shot so for example, if you uh, get a shot from somebody walking by, and uh, that'll probably be very cheap. Um, but if you go like in my shot that I I took uh, for the uh, meteor over here, I took a um, shot of a city with a helicopter filming the city. So actually, it's uh, filmed from a helicopter, and this is a little bit more expensive, uh, which of course is obvious and uh, completely normal in my opinion. So. I really like this website, great quality, and that's why I chose it because I can go in a helicopter and go film my uh, film my shot. And also, I live in Belgium, so we don't have these awesome buildings over here. So I wanted these buildings uh, for this uh, shot, so I took this one. Um, so be sure to check out the link in the description for Dissolve. Uh, okay, so let's get started with the tutorial. And uh, the most important thing on how to uh, on creating these uh, shots over here is making the actual meteor. So we are going to create a new composition and that's the way I am going to work. Um, I'm going to make a new composition, a square composition of 2000 pixels on 2000 pixels. I'm going to rename this to uh, meteor. There we go. And I'm going to make it like, let's say 10 seconds long. And I'm not sure why my computer is winding, uh, like turning so fast right now. I'm not sure if you can hear that and I'm sorry if you do. Um, click OK and then we have created a new composition. I'm going to create a new layer and a solid of course. I'm going to rename this to BG and make it black. OK and click OK. So now we have our background layer. Right click over here, new, solid and now we, go, uh, we are going to rename this to smoke trail. And this will be the smoke of course of our uh, meteor. So go to effect, uh, trap code, particular, and now we're going to change some settings over here. So open up emitter, and the most important thing over here uh, is the amount of uh, particles. So I'm going to change this to, let's say, 590, five, something like this should do fine. And I'm going to change the velocity to zero on every aspect over here. So we don't have the explosion. I'm also going to drag this layer uh, down a bit, uh, in a bit. So we already have the birth of the uh, particles. And there are also other solutions on doing this, but I find this the quickest and the easiest way. Maybe not the best, but whatever. Okay, open a particle. And now the life, we're going to change it to 5 points, uh, uh, 2.5. And maybe a life random of, let's say, um, let's say 60 just so it doesn't die as fast and it dies kind of randomly so you don't see actual that it's actually stopping the line and some particles will last a little longer um, which I find a little more uh, natural uh, so now, now we want to change the particle type instead of sphere to cloudlet and this will look like you know, like a cloud which is kind of obvious and change the feather amount to 100% and change the size to let's say 10. Also a size random of 20 so we have uh, more varied um, particles 
and the size of a life we can keep this this way the opacity all changes to 15 because it's smoke and it's actually transparent a bit maybe even 15 is too much but um i did like um, the outcome that i get with a uh, 15 so i'll keep it this way change the random again to 20 not too much because else it will kind of looks fake and the opacity over life let's change this to um, this option over here so it fades off uh, over life now another important thing is the color and um, our smoke for the meteor should be a little dark gray so we are going to change this instead of at birth uh, to random over gray, uh, gradient and i'm going to change the color to a uh, y to black over here you can click this option and i'm going to change the white to a light gray over here there we go and i'm going to extend this just a bit click on the black and make this a dark gray color okay the shading we can leave this right now uh, you can all, always add shading and that will improve the quality of your meteor uh, with lights but um again this will uh, increase the render time a lot so i don't really like working with it because it's really slowing down my computer um, i'm going to open up air over here and I'm going to change a few things. So I'm going to change the X position, let's say to 250 or, yeah, let's say 250. And just to be sure, there we go. I've noted some things down um, of my previous outcomes so we don't get a too much of a different uh, outcome right now. And there we go. Okay, and I'm going to zoom out by scrolling down just a bit i'm going to place this right over there just so we don't have enough space to let it die and yeah kind of center it in the shot zoom back in and now we are going to open up the turbulence field and we are going to affect the position by um, 150 maybe no that's way too much um effect position well, let's try 150 and then just change the scale or the speed and there we go okay this is looking a lot better and let's preview this uh, for right now so we can see our smoke trail Another thing I forgot to do at the beginning was uh, changing the emitter type to a box instead of a point so we have a little bit more space to work with right here. And another thing I like to do is add some motion blur because now we have too much detail in our smoke and if it's going fast you won't have to, uh, you won't be able to see that detail. So we will uh, add some motion blur, go to rendering, motion blur and the comp settings we can change this to. Um, 150 or so. Uh, what I, I mean, thousands, 500. Okay, uh, let's increase this just a bit more. And there we go. And this is a little bit better. Let's preview this. Okay, so this is uh, looking quite nice. Now we're going to change uh, the uh, start of our uh, smoke trail right here. We're going to make this a fiery look. So we're going to click on our smoke trail, duplicate it, press the return key on the keyboard and change this to fire trail. Okay, uh, we're going to change the amount a little bit more to let's say 690, okay. And change the size to 75 for each of these, uh, oh, seven, this should be 75, okay, and drop down just a bit, and let's go to the size here, 
gonna change it to 30 amount for random uh, randomization just so uh, fire is a little bit more uh, again a little bit different and a little bit more random and another thing we want to do is uh, affect the position right here we're going to increase and um, decrease this to 75 or so and increase the motion blur a little bit more okay uh, let's solo this layer okay uh, as you can see it's still a little bit too long so we're going to change the life um, as well go back up and there we go the life decreases uh, to your liking so um, I'll take 1.2 yeah I'll take this one here I will also increase the size just a tiny bit was oh, way too much 15 maybe and then decrease maybe oh, let's let's take 20 let's try 20 why is it changing okay size 20 but then we're going to change the particles per second and decrease it okay now open up both of these so the de and uh, deselected for soloing the layer by the way um sorry for not mentioning this but if you click here you solo a layer so now what you want to uh, do is go to effect color correction and now we're going to add something that I really do like a lot because they really do help over here and that's colorama and oh colorama and that's going to give us the fire look so um, in the input phase we're going to change this instead of intensity to alpha and now what we want to do is oh, doesn't look nice doesn't doesn't it Okay, this is our meteor, so we're done. Thanks for watching the tutorial and goodbye. No, okay, okay, this doesn't look like fire, so let's change that out. And go to modify. No, not modify. What am I doing here? Okay, um, over here, the output cycle. You can change this instead of these uh, standard user preset. Well, that doesn't look pretty nice, but uh, we can change that to fire, and that's going to give us this nice look. You can also take something else like uh, fire smoke and uh, so that's something if you want with smoke but uh, again I prefer to use my smoke uh, separate from my fire because as you see uh, as you saw it doesn't look uh, as nice as it does now change this to an add mode uh, if you don't see this, uh, this mode layer uh, click on the toggle switches and that will change that and now you can add or, uh, or make it screen anything you want maybe let's go for screen because uh, add is a little bit too intense and also let's delete this uh, two brights uh, this bright key and delete it make sure you don't select the black one because you really want the black to keep it in there uh, if you change it by accident just select the preset again and this one I'm also going to delete because you will have our, our uh, intensity anyway okay Maybe let's change that a little bit more the size X. Okay. This is what I like. And there we go. Even more. Why not? Because we can. And I didn't do that in the preview, but I think this might look quite nice. Okay, but now I'm missing the intensity in the center, so um, because I changed the amount of it, it doesn't really matter. Let's close this down. Let's close this down, and we are going to add a curve. So go to effects, color correction, and curves. Increase this, and there we go. And we're getting our intensity back. Now go again to effects, stylize, and we're going to add some glow. And what I like to do is add one glow. Uh, like let's say 30 increase the threshold so it's again too intense and decrease the intensity over here 2.4 maybe okay and duplicate that uh, glow layer and increase the radius right now to 150 maybe okay so um I like this pretty much. Uh, smoke trail also increases just a bit. Uh, increases a little bit more. Okay. 
and change the life maybe just or we can keep the life command Z to undo and decrease the life of the fire and maybe it's a little bit too thick so so I'm gonna change that uh, let's mess around a little bit over here okay and now um, as, as you can see it's too much saturated so our, we are going to desaturate it by going to color correction hue and saturation and then bring this down like this uh, okay you can also add a new curves and start messing around with the reds and blues but that again is your opinion and your own decision to make okay so let's keep this one for right now let's see the original one okay I desaturated it a lot more so where is the human separation yes okay um, let's keep this one and we will desaturate it in the color correction in the final comp anyway so now we are, have imported our footage uh, over here and uh, something we want to do is go to the tracker if you don't see this go to window tracker and click on the footage and track with the camera and that's something that's uh, come with uh, CS6 so if you have a lower version you will have to use a track motion and if you don't know how to use a track motion and uh, you can al always find some tutorials on YouTube as well because there are a lot of tutorials on the track motion for Adobe After Effects and even I, I suppose I have one so go and check that out if you don't have the track camera um, I'll be back once it's uh, finished because as you can see over here time remaining is 4 minutes so we'll have to wait uh, a little bit okay so I'm back and it's done tracking so as you can see it's solving the camera and there we go um, now what we want to do is zoom in just uh, until you see something and go to a point it doesn't really matter if it's going out of the frame or not just right click it and create a new uh, null and camera and now we have a 3d camera that is going to recognize everything in 3d in our uh, composition so we're going to import our meteor crash over here I'm not sure meteor okay great it's meteor and we're going to drag this into our composition so just on top um, there we go and I'm also going to change the length of my clip to five seconds or so so click on the end to as uh, to select it and this uh, work area end and then right click trim the comp to work area okay so now we have our meteor with the back, uh, black background because we have made a black background over here but um, if you delete this background you will see less uh, quality in your meteor well not too much but um, we are going to change the mode to screen in this case just so you can see the rest and you can also leave this on normal and if you delete the black backgrounds, it should be over here. But as you can see, uh, it's kind of messy and doesn't really look right. So I'd like to keep in the background and change the blend, uh, blend mode over here. And also key out the blacks if you want to. So go to normal uh, keying and you can go to key or key over here. Click on this uh, painted tool, click over here and then increase the tolerance but uh, as you can see the smoke trail is going to disappear so this would only work if you're only working with this fire uh, increasing the, the edge better okay so in this shot it wouldn't uh, it won't work anyway so okay we can't use this so i'm just going to pick screen uh, doesn't really matter too much you see the smoke but the smoke isn't really dark enough so um light enough because the screen is going to take out the black uh, out the black so that's um unfortunate a little so increases amount of particles maybe and it's going to be way too much maybe or not okay so this is a lot better and you'll see more detail in here okay so now we have our meteor in our shot and toggle the switches to change this to this uh, mode and create a 3D layer of our layer from the meteor and now we can see our meteor in the shot 
you can go to a well and do that at the end uh, now what you can do is go to position and that you can do by clicking on the P on the keyboard and then increasing this uh, Z position or going to the Z position on your screen clicking on it and dragging out and let's make a meteor rain in the background so here we have a meteor what even further okay meteor one duplicate it well not duplicate it first we are going to animate it just a bit so go over here on the top click p on the keyboard again uh, click on the stopwatch which, uh, which will create a new keyframe but as i'm at the end of my timeline it will create a new keyframe at the end so make sure you're at the beginning of your timeline or just drag your keyframe to the beginning of your timeline now we're going to move forward 10 frames and that we can do by holding the shift key and clicking on the next frame and that will uh, jump ahead 10 frames and now we're going to move this just like that in the same direction uh, you uh, you see the smoke trail we should be moving uh, that way and I like to work with the uh, composition instead of uh, immediately working with the particular uh, trap code particular in my shot because it's tracked and if I'm going to work with lights and the camera is going to move and um, the smoke is also going to move and it's a straight shot so that's why I've, uh, I didn't do that okay so now we have one shot duplicate that maybe uh, change the offset time over here click P on the keyboard select the position of the key uh, of just select the position by clicking on it and then click on the left arrow to select your first keyframe or on the right arrow if it's on the right of uh, your uh, keyframes and then we can just move this around and it will move both the first keyframe and the last keyframe so you don't have to do this all the ways again so uh, let's position it over here and let's increase the Z position as well so it's even further than the first meteor and you can keep doing this but uh, in this tutorial I won't be making too many of those because people are waiting for the next step okay so let's preview this just to see what we have and this again is all up to you so you won't have to take a lot more time than I do right now um, but this is because of the tutorial and also something that I didn't do right was why 10 frames you have to do this till the end of the shot. Why didn't you guys say anything? Because you're like being making a fool of myself. Okay, so let's preview this again. The 10 frames is if you want to make a meteor pass your camera close by. And that's what we are going to do after this shot. Okay, so we can see some meteors in the background. I think it's offset the time a little bit more. Oh. You can offset the time over here. Make sure you select all the three layers and make sure it doesn't start just in your shot. So drag these over and make them start sooner than your shot uh, starts. And then drag this out. And again, the keyframes, select them all and drag them out of shot. And I know I'm kind of messing up right now. Uh, not paying too much attention. So I'm sorry for that. Uh, okay, so. In my opinion, they should be a lot further. So let's select the position and first keyframe. Okay, and drag it out. Okay, I'm going to select the Z position and drag it this way. Why isn't it moving? Oh, okay. It's moving. My computer is just slowing down a lot. Okay, there we go. And we have our shot. So meteors in the background going slowly because they are far away by the way don't want to make them too fast because it's not going to look right uh, if you have some meteors in front of a building you can always duplicate the shot of, uh, of the orig or original shot for, uh, with the stock footage okay couldn't get my words right and get this on top of all the layers and then just mask out your building and then click M on the keyboard, make a math pad, move forward like 10 frames, shift, next frame, and then just uh, rotoscope it actually, just 
again, select and deselect it, then select one of the points, move it, okay, deselect it by clicking over here, clicking back on the layer, okay, so now click on one point, move that around, click on another point, move that around, uh, spacebar to move around in your uh, space over here, and then you have to do this for each 10 frames, or maybe maybe even each frame, depending on how fast and how complicated the shot is, or maybe even one second, doesn't really matter, uh, just test it out, um, and then just move this around, and this around, and just keep doing that. And I'm working on my laptop, by the way, so that's why it's kind of getting slower. Um, and it's rendering, by the way, in the background, so that also decreases the speed of my computer. So I'm really sorry about that. Okay, so um, I don't have any uh, meteors in front of my building, so I don't have to do this completely. I'm just explaining guy, uh, you guys how to do that if you have that uh, complicated shot. Okay, so another thing we want to do is import the meteor right over here. I'm also going to add a tint effect and decrease that amount of this uh, so we have not so much information of the fire. And then go to curves, color correction curves, increase it, uh, the brightness and decrease the shadows. And the reds, we want to take off some reds, highlights. And there we go, we are getting that nice and better look. Decrease the blue to get the orange. And just play around, just mess around, see what you get. Um, maybe some more blues in the dark uh, areas. And there we go, we have our fire. Change this to a screen mode again. And now what you can do is create a uh, 3D layer but if you're going to use only 10 frames to let it pass by then it doesn't really matter so what we can do is move it up here click p on the keyboard click on the stopwatch hold shift and click on this keyframe and now just move it in the same direction of your smoke so if you want a different direction you have to go in your composition of your meteor and change the wind um, positions for your smoke trail um, so go over here, uh, wind X and Y. If you change that direction, you can see that it's going more to the left, Command Z to undo. Uh, so just mess around with these settings if you want another angle of your uh, meter, a meteor. Okay, so just drag it off your screen. And let's preview this. I'm not sure if it's working or not because in my original shot I actually tracked it and also made it 3D so I'm just going to test this out maybe we'll have to make it 3D okay so maybe make it a little bit faster even so not 10 frames but more like 5 frames Let's try this again okay so now it's like a meter passing by and if you want to increase the, uh, the scale you can do that by pressing the S key on the keyboard while clicking on the layer and increasing the amount here. And again, ramp pre preview this. And of course, a meteor is really intense, and right now we don't see the intensity. And to replicate that intensity of the, uh, the meteor, I'm going to use some uh, optical flare action. So I'm going to layer new solid, and hopefully you can do this with me if you don't have the optical flares. I would recommend getting that uh, if you're going into this style of film because uh, flares do get the job done. <laughs> okay, so go to Effect, Video Copilot, Optical Flares. And go to Options, uh, maybe Lights, let's see what we have here. And let's go back maybe to the natural sets okay this one looks pretty nice and let's hide some of these um, multi hours uh, okay scroll up we can leave that in there okay um okay click okay 
and I'm going to keep it blue because I don't like blue. People probably know that already if you're following me for a long while. Um, and now you can see that intensity. So you get less of the uh, actual meteor. If you get this a little bit down. Okay, so uh, you can see a little bit less of the meteor. Uh, if you change this to screen, you can still see the meteor and just increase the scale. And I think this will be a better thing to do right now. And I don't really like the flare too much, uh, so I'm going to change this. Maybe this one, okay. I suppose I do like this one. And you can always uh, make your own flare. Okay, there we go. I'm just going to click OK because we have to finish this tutorial. Okay. Maybe more blue. It's way too blue. More like this. Okay. So now what you can do is go back and the frames until you don't see. So just deselect this for just a second and just go back until you don't see the meteor. So one frame before it goes in the shot. Okay, maybe two. And then again, select our optical flares, go to scale, change this to zero. Click ahead two frames until you see the meteor and then increase this to like 500. Also click a new keyframe for the position X, Y and go back one frame and position it like over here because I think the meteor is over here because um, but because of the brightness of the sky, we're not able to see it. So just keep clicking frame per frame because we don't have a lot of frames to fill in. So I'm just going to do this frame per frame. And there we go. We are going to position it right over here. And now we have some nice looking flares and the intensity actually shows that it's really, really bright. And one more frame and then we're going to uh, well, go back one frame, click U on the keyboard to reveal all the keyframes for that layer, click a new keyframe for scale, move ahead one frame, and then just change the scale to zero. And there we go, we have our flare, and oh, it was an accident. Okay, changes to fit up to 100%. That's the best way to preview this. And now you can see we have our meteor passing by, and of course you lose a little detail, but it's... Uh, if it's going fast, you're not able to see, uh, it's not supposed to be really detailed. If you want a detailed shot, you should go one in the background, but because of the sky brightness, it's kind of difficult to see with the screen on, uh, screen mode uh, of our meteor. So what you can do is go to curves and maybe add some more of a contrasty look. Let's solo this so to see, okay. So this is looking pretty fine. And then add some uh, sound effects and it'll do the job. So we have some nice meteors in the background, a meteor in the front that is passing by. You can also increase it, and you can always increase the scale, uh, increase the life so we have a little bit more of a fire, um, darken the, the smoke trails, it's all up to you. I'm just going to point you out and give you some tips on how to create this, but uh, again, now all the rest is able, uh, up to you. So come up with something interesting, come up with something original, and I would love to see what you have made. And post this as a video response on this uh, tutorial, by the way. That would be great, so I can see what you guys can make using my tutorials. Um, okay, so uh, is there another thing we can do? And yes, there is. Uh, we can add some nice looking um, letter boxings, and that I do by going to layer new solid. Uh, choosing a black one, ladder box, hit OK, and then I use this uh, mask a rectangle tool and go to the middle of my clip, click and hold control. Uh, is it control? Yes, it's control to um, get a perfectly um, same sized uh, square for, from the center. So it's going to scale it from the center. And now what we're going to do is instead of add, we're going to change this to subtract and bam, we have our nice looking ladder boxing. So um, click on the V2 uh, of, of, on your keyboard to uh, get your moving tool, well, your or original tool, I'm not sure, selection tool, yeah. And double click on the mask if you want to make it a little bit smaller and then hold Alt and drag it in. 
No, it's not all of its console, of course. Okay, so there we go. And usually it should be 800 by 9020, but uh, in this case, we have done it a little bit more uh, faster. Click on the optical flares just to have one layer beneath the letter boxing. So your next layer you're going to create is going to be above the selected layer you have there. So that's why I'm selecting optical flares. And go to layer new adjustment layer. Click your return key on the keyboard. Change this to C, uh, color grading CG. Uh, get it under the letter box. I'm not sure why I created it on top. Um, go to effects. Color correction tint. 25%. Effects color correction curves. And now add some reds. And go to blue. Delete some blues so we have some nice orange sunset look on our uh, shop. And there we go, we have some color correction. We have done everything we can on the shop to make it look nice. Now let's preview our work that we have done. Okay, it's way too contrasty, so I'm going to delete this contrast. Okay. I'm also going to uh, effects for correction while with the CG uh, layer still uh, selected go to levels and then just delete some blacks Just a tiny bit not too much just so you get a little bit more information out of these shadows And that's it so and um, this is our shot and I'm not sure what I've done here It's kind of a probably a bug or something that I've selected with the mask by accident um, it doesn't really matter. So, um, okay, so thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Be sure to um, leave a video response of your creations. We'd love to see them. Uh, so, yeah, thanks for watching and goodbye.